Welcome to the Champions of Active Women podcast. In this podcast, we will interview individuals who have been successful within athletics and beyond. We hope that these interviews will encourage and inspire girls and women to be active for a lifetime, to reach their goals, and to break new barriers in sport and life. This podcast is brought to you by the Active Women's Health Initiative and the Sports Medicine Research Institute at the University of Kentucky. The mission of the Active Women's Health Initiative is to optimize health and promote physical activity and wellness for girls and women across the lifespan. We hope you enjoy our conversations and join us in understanding women's health today to ensure women's health tomorrow. Welcome to the Champions of Active Women podcast. I'm your host for the day, Natalie Jones, and this podcast is brought to you by the Active Women's Health Initiative within the Sports Medicine Research Institute at the University of Kentucky. And today I have the pleasure of interviewing Rob Harris. Rob Harris completed his fourth season as a strength and conditioning coach for the UK men's basketball team in 2019-2020 after serving two seasons as the assistant strength coach. Harris is responsible for the day-to-day fitness of the men's basketball team. In his six seasons with the program, the Wildcats have won four league regular season and four tournament titles. He's also responsible for the skills and athletic testing at Kentucky's annual Pro Day, where scouts and general managers across the NBA attend two days of UK practice for a basis of physical measurements for future professional evaluations. A number of NBA players who have trained under Harris at Kentucky have commended Harris for changing their bodies and their work ethic. With Harris's help, UK players annually post some of the best numbers at the annual NBA Draft Combine. Before coming to the University of Kentucky, Harris has worked for the University of Arkansas as the assistant strength and conditioning coach for their football team, an assistant strength and conditioning coach for the NFL's Cincinnati Bengals for three years, as well as the Ohio State's football program, assisting with and coordinating an implementation of strength training and conditioning programs for the Buckeyes. He and his wife, Maria, have two daughters, Anaya and Alea. So Rob, welcome, and thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate you having me, and it's definitely um, a pleasure to be here. And honestly, what didn't mention and I don't think a lot of people know is that I actually got my start at the University of Kentucky back in 2009. I volunteered for the football team as a college volunteer so I've come to a full circle and now I am back home. Yeah that must feel feel really good to kind of be back where where it all started. Um, Could you tell us a little bit kind of about how you got into sport even from a child or as a young adult? Yeah, for sure. I think um, when I was, I want to say maybe five, six years old, you know, I I grew up with all my uncles and all my players and was a short, chubby kid. So basketball wasn't going to be my thing. However, I'm pretty decent of a basketball player, but um, I took up football And from that point on, I just fell in love with sports. I fell in love with the brotherhood that it provides. And, you know, I always like training for the sport. And so, you know, I became good, ended up playing high school, a little bit of college at Kentucky State. And then that's when I actually started to fall in love with strength and conditioning and kind of learn what strength and conditioning was, what it was about. And. Now I am here and I'm going into my my seventh year here at Kentucky. And I mean, I got over 10 years of experience now, which kind of makes me feel old saying that. But, uh, you know, that's that's kind of how, you know, I got my start. All my family members play sports and I always, you know, hung out with my older cousins and older brothers. And so I wanted to be like them. So I would always play sports with them. I would always watch basketball you know I came up in the Michael Jordan era so watching him play and his competitiveness and then watching Barry Sanders run the football like I just always idolized those guys and and wanted to be like those guys and so that's kind of how I fell in in love with sports and then um, once I got to you know see how those elite athletes bodies were I became uh, a big fan of lifting weights like one from my sophomore year to my junior year in high school, I literally spent every single day 
in the weight room um, after practice. And I seen how it transformed my body. And I just, I fell in love with strength and conditioning and training people and just helping. So that's, that's kind of how I got my, my start. Yeah. And so in terms of finding that love for sport, obviously impacting your education, impacting your career choice, um, how do you feel that it has impacted your whole life realm of what you tell your, um, your athletes? Like what is the, the biggest thing that you tell them in terms of um, finding that motivation to change their bodies or to take it seriously? Working, I'm sure with, with college athletes can be really fun, but also challenging um, in terms of maybe getting them to, to focus all the time on what's, what's necessary to improve. Yeah, well, nowadays, you know, we've got social media and everybody loves that, like, instant gratification, the instant satisfaction. And so, you know, for me, I just speak on a lot of my previous experiences that I've had um, with myself. And I try to explain to our guys all the time. I mean, I'm like, I'm 34. I'm old. Well, I'm not old, but, you know, my body feels old because um, – when I started off, I didn't have a trainer. I didn't have a strength and conditioning coach. So I never really had someone to teach me the proper way to take care of my body. And so I see my body start to break down. And so that's one of the things that I preach to our guys is just about you guys have a ticket to literally the rest of your life. And your body is that ticket. You know what I'm saying? So you have to treat your body just like um, a temple. You've got to make sure that, you know, when you are eating, you got to be conscious of, is this going to help my body or is this going to hurt my body? Is this going to help my performance or is this going to damage my performance? You know, another thing with these young kids, they don't like to get sleep because they want to be up all night on the phones, you know, playing video games and things like that. So I try to just really talk to them and have real conversations with them about how important it is for them to take care of their bodies you know and then you have some athletes who think that that old school method of you've got to do more you've got to do more you've got to outwork the other guy and all that other kind of things and which is important however you got to be smart about it so my job is to kind of just teach them the rights and the wrongs of when you're doing too much, when your body needs rest and recovery, because your body will tell you, you know what I mean? Um, with injuries and things like that that can occur, it's very important to understand your body, because not everybody has the same um, body type. You know, not everybody's body will adapt the same to um, – what you're putting into it like for instance i'm a guy i can't drink any soda like if i drink soda my body will feel like i've had three thousand gallons <laughs> of pop in it you know what i mean after just one little soda so i try to just kind of explain it to them in that way and just make them more in tune with their body and how their body feels like every day when they come in the weight room i ask like how's your body feel today like what hurts and so it gets them thinking how their body is feeling. It gets them thinking about what they did the previous day, what they've been eating, what their nutrition is like, what their sleep is like. So it's it's been, you know, very fortunate to be here at UK and have the access to different training modalities that can actually help the athletes see where their, like, production is. So as far as, for example, we have a... a um, situation that shows their force production and it will tell them like okay if I'm gonna give you a number you're jumping at a eight let's just say eight eight is your average out of ten and then you come in this day your force production is only a four well then let's go over the last couple of days kind of what you've been doing what um like I said with the foods with your sleep and all that those kind of things so that has really helped me and it's really helped the athletes get a visual representation to see 
you know, what they have done and what they're doing and things like that. So that's been great. But recovery and nutrition are one of the main things that I will um, preach for our guys. And I think that's what helps them to transform their bodies the way that it does during their time here and as they continue on in their professional careers. Yeah, and I think that's something that's so important for everyone. Like you touched on it in the beginning in the sense that we only have one body, you know, this is it. Mm -hmm. And I think that as a young athlete myself, um, you kind of take that for granted and kind of push and muscle through certain things. And I do think that that definitely is the, the old school method, you know, of just push, push, push. Um, whereas now we're seeing you can actually gain more, like you said, by listening to your body, resting and recovery, how important that is to be able to perform at a higher level. Um, and so I, I love that you're, you're able to teach that. And that's something that um, Active Women Health Initiative Girls Can program is trying to do as well, teaching people how to listen to their bodies and just to be aware of different ways to do things, you know? Um, and so I think that that's great. And one thing that I do want to kind of switch gears a little bit because your career obviously is very much in health and wellness in terms of strength and conditioning focused on, like you said, nutrition, rest, recovery, as well as the weight room, um, working on force and speed with, with athletes. Um, but how does that transfer into like your current situation of, of your health decisions of your life, where you are right now as a 34 year old, a young 34 year old? Uh, man, I don't feel young, but no, <laughs> um, honestly, it, it, it helps me because when I was in elementary school, I had a, <laughs> well, it sounds me, I had a fat PE teacher. Okay. Um, and not to sound mean, but, you know, he was a guy who wasn't really in shape. Um, I mean, even like it was so bad, like the guy you see him smoking cigarettes <laughs> outside the school and things like that. But I just I always look back at that. And I told myself, I didn't want to be that out of shape, strength and conditioning coach. I didn't want to be preaching one thing and then doing another. You know what I'm saying? So for me. Like, I try to make sure that um, I'm healthy. You know, I don't, I, my diet isn't always 100% the best. Um, however, you know, I make sure that I get daily exercise. You know, I try to lead by example as far as, as far as that goes. I try to always, you know, make sure that I'm getting my rest so that I'm able to deal with these guys because, I mean, I'm working you know, nine, 10 hour days, sometimes 12. So I'm making sure that I have all the energy that I have, not only for them, but that I have for my kids when I get home, you know, after long days. So I'm not just being a slouch on the couch um, so I can spend good time with them. So for me, it's just about, you know, leading by example and not wanting to be, you know, somebody who's just like, I'm not listening to this guy. He's out of shape you know he's eating mcdonald's all day long and things like that so it just really made me more conscious of the decisions that i make matter of fact the funny thing is me and my wife actually had a conversation about the same thing yesterday you know because i i literally I'll, I'll work out sometimes two to three times a day you know um and also in doing that i'm trying to figure out different styles of working out that also may work for my athletes as well. Right. You got to test it out first, see what it's like. And I think it's also um, your job. I am sure um, is a very active job as well. You're not sitting at a desk. Um, you know, mm -hmm. you're interacting in the weight room on the field, um, on the court, wherever you are with your athletes um, as well. So that counts as movement too. Um, in terms yeah. of making sure that you're healthy to be able to do your job. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I actually um, got one of those little Apple watches and with the fitness tracker and just by working, not me working out and being in the weight room, it was funny to see because certain days, like just being in the weight room, training those guys, like I was burning 
close to 800 calories just by doing my job. You know what I'm saying? So right. that's a big, big benefit for, for me as well. So, you know, like you say, I'm not sitting down at my desk. I mean, I may sit down at my desk a total of an hour the entire day. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, we live very opposite it's, lives. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 cool because you know I I get to stay active. I'm on my feet. Um, you know, I mean, heck, I get to listen to music and run around and train people, and I, I'll have a lot of fun with my job. So I'm constantly moving. Yeah, that's great. And you've you've mentioned your wife Maria, um, and so you guys have two girls together. Um, Anaya and Alea. And so can you talk a little bit about what it's like to be a girl dad? We know that um, NBA legend um, Kobe Bryant was a big fan of, of being a girl dad with, with his daughter Gianna and, and started that, that trend. I feel like that hashtag girl dad really, really took off um, through social media platforms with different celebrities and and other athletes um, posting pictures of themselves with their daughters. And so um, how do you feel like your life is like being a girl dad? You know, it's 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 truly a, a honor to be a father of, you know, daughters. I think a lot of a lot of men, you know, they normally want boys so they can, you know, have those same, you know, rough housing around the house and, you know, training them for sports and things like that. Uh but for me, you know, I was blessed with two beautiful daughters who are very, very opposite. And the, I remember the day when Kobe and Gigi, they passed away. I just hugged my oldest because she and Gigi were the same age. And, you know, it, I yeah. couldn't, I couldn't imagine losing her, you know what I'm saying? Or something happened to me and her and then Alea and Maria having to kind of just continue on with life. You know what I'm saying? With something tragic like that. But for me, it's it's been great. You know, I will say, you know, I always haven't been the perfect dad. You know, I don't think any parent is perfect, but I've, I've always had to figure out my kids and what gets them going and things like that. So, like, my oldest, she's, um, she's really not into sports. So, you know, I had to – and now I was like, man, that hurt. You know what I mean? I'm just like, I, you know, I wanted to – be going to games and watch her play and things like that. But that's like not what she enjoys. What she enjoys is she enjoys music. She enjoys um, cooking. She enjoys playing her instruments and things like that. So, you know, I've got to, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be able to sit through her musical performances and things like that. So that's been cool for me because that's something that I've never, ever enjoyed. But now I've, you know, I've had a love for for that. Like, for instance, the Hamilton play that was on, um, or on musical. Or, yeah. Yeah, it was on Disney. We watched it together, and not in a million years would I have ever <laughs> watched that. But because of Anaya, you know, it's, it's uh, made me appreciate those things. And then on the other side of that, I've got Alea, who is a tomboy who loves video games she loves basketball soccer um the poor girl would play football you know what i mean she would she's just she loves sports and she loves competition whether it's us playing monopoly or uno at the house like you know she's so competitive that when she was younger we used to have to kind of cheat for her so she could win because she would she would start crying if she lost like, every game you know what I mean so um and it, it's made me figure things out because even in basketball sometimes when I'm getting on her um you know she's like stop yelling at me and things like that so you know it, it's caused those little fights between her and I but it's made me kind of have more fun with it with her and, you know, learn to be her dad as opposed to her trainer and coach. So that's yeah. that's some of the things that, you know, for me, I've um, just had to embrace what they love and kind of start to learn more about what they love and just support them in, in those ways. And, you know, even with the health stuff, like I said, Anaya, she loves cooking. 
Like, homegirl can bake her little butt off. She can make, I mean, whatever. And so, you know, it's, it's fun to have her making things and try what she makes and, you know, being a critic and telling her, like, no, that was disgusting. You know what I'm saying? But in a joking way, but, you yeah. know, but then when she, when she makes those things that are, like, really good, you know, I'm I'm always joking with my kids, but it's um it's just fun watching them grow because you know Anaya she turned 13 this year and some days I just look at her and I'm like man who is this woman in my house and where does she come from you know right so yeah. it's uh but it's 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 cool you know it's it's an enjoyable job that you can never clock out of. Yeah. And I think it's great that you mention how different they are um, in terms of personalities, activities, all of it, but yet how your job, especially, I mean, as a strength and conditioning coach is motivating people, right. And supporting people and encouraging them. Um, and that's what you're doing with them, you know, um, just translating those skills into whether it's music, theater, performances, or out on the field, on a court, um, with your daughters. And so I think that that's great. Just encouraging them to be involved in whatever realm that is for them. Um, I do want to note that I know that, um, Alea had a birthday recently and you made her, or she wanted to do, do sprints for her birthday. Is that right? Yeah. So her, her older cousin, who's, he's, he's a year older than her, you know, they, talk all the time they're on the video game playing with each other they're always competing with each other and so you know they wanted to it started with them playing basketball one-on-one -on -one. and then my nephew wanted to play me one-on-one -on -one. and then they wanted to team up against me and play two-on-one -on -one. and then they started racing each other in the driveway and they wanted me to race um, and then in the backyard they started <laughs> running relays from both fences you know the whole length of the yard and it's just I it was it was a joy for for me to watch you know and also it was a joy for me to see like her actually winning some of those sprints against her older cousin you know yeah and I just with, think that with that's her great. being yeah with, with her being you know a girl and him being the guy you know what I mean it's all to me it's always beautiful when a girl meets a guy and something so I agree you know it. yeah no yeah. It, it it does so and it's it's um it's pretty cool you know so I like that really, of really cool. of celebrating birthdays with with movement and physical activity I know um you celebrated my birthday with me last year I did a um active birthday party and I think that that's just um it's just so fun to start that young in terms of loving movement and enjoying physical activity. And so um, one of our last questions for you is what advice would you give to girls or women um, about playing sports or being active, especially if maybe they are a little timid to start because they think it's for boys or um, maybe just are a little intimidated by it? Yeah, well, you know, honestly, it's the same that I would tell women who, um, they want to start getting in shape, but they're just like, I don't want to lift weights because I don't want to be big and bulky, you know? And it's like, there's ways to go about things um, to make you, you know, not get big and bulky. And I, I don't want to say look manly, but you know what I mean? Like have those big broad shoulders. But um, the biggest thing I always tell women and my girls is that, everything is just about being a healthier you, you know, you don't, shouldn't get so wrapped up in what the scale says, because sometimes that will lie to you. Um, it's all about just being healthy when it comes to movement and fitness and staying active, you know, it's, it's, it's creating a healthy lifestyle for you and also just doing something that is consistent. You know, I think a lot of people struggle with, their diet and when you hear the word diet you think that you know you've got to eat vegetables and rice cakes all day 
but it's just about, you know, I'm not a big fan of diets. I'm a big fan of just constantly um, eating properly. You know what I mean? Like you can have your fun meals every now and then, but you don't want every meal to be a cheeseburger and fries. So just, you know, about being more conscientious of what you're putting into your body and just being consistent with it, um, for that. And then with sports, you know, I think that women and girls have to realize that to me, girls are more powerful than guys in a sense. You know, I mean, I don't think men could carry a baby for nine months and deal with all of that and still be here. You know what I mean? So I think that 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 was put on females because God knew that females were stronger than us as men. You know what I'm saying? And I think that whatever you want to do in life, whether it's sports, uh, being a firefighter, you know, um, a construction worker, a truck driver, anything that's male dominant, you can do it as well. And you can do it probably 10 times better than any of us guys can. You know what I'm saying? So I'll just encourage them to have no limits. Don't have any limitations on what you want to do in life, what you want to pursue. And just always, always be conscientious of your health and staying active for a minimum of 30 minutes you know at least five to six days a week yeah yeah that's a great I love all of that and I think um for me especially for for girls um the biggest thing that I always always tell them is just to have fun that you know um enjoy it if you don't like basketball try soccer if you don't like soccer mm -hmm. try something like there's tons of different ways to be active, like you said, to move your body. Um, and everyone is different, like you mentioned with soda, you know, with nutrition, everyone's different with sports or movement. So whatever your your jam is, find it, do it, have fun. Um, but thank you so much. Um, I wanna end with one little question of um, what is your ending message, your your power quote, or maybe a mantra or something that, that you have that you tell your, um, the men that you work with at UK or your girls? What's, what's that last little Rob Harris strength and conditioning coach nugget that you want to share? Yeah. I, I just always, for me, you know, I go back to um, your body being a temple and treat it as such. Like a Ferrari can't run off of just regular gas. And so that's not even to say with nutrition, that's just with anything you do. Like you want to consume yourself with positivity, things that are going to um, help you, help you grow as a person, the things that you read, the things that you see, things that you watch on TV. Like you want to make sure that you're fill filling yourself up with positivity and the right things as opposed to all the wrong things that can you know have a toll on you and really change your perspective on life and just knowing that you got one body and you got one life and enjoy and take care of both of those things to the best of your ability amen yes thank you thank you so much for joining us today, Rob. It was a pleasure talking with you. And thank you listeners um, for joining us today for the Champions of Active Women's podcast. Again, this podcast is brought to you by the Active Women Health Initiative and the Sports Medicine Research Institute within the College of Health Sciences at the University of Kentucky. So thank you so much, Rob. And I hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. Thank you for listening to the Champions of Active Women podcast. This podcast is brought to you by the Active Women's Health Initiative and was produced by the Faculty Media Depot at the University of Kentucky. If you enjoyed this episode, you can listen and subscribe to all of our episodes wherever you find your podcasts. For up-to-date information about the Active Women's Health Initiative, you can find us on social media at UKAWHI. Thank you for supporting us as we work to promote health and physical activity among girls and women across the lifespan.